Good afternoon uh, and welcome to this course on introduction to algebraic geometry and commutative algebra. I am a, my name is Professor Dilip Patil. I am from Department of Mathematics, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. And I wish you enjoy this course. Uh, it will be more or less self-contained course. I will, in the beginning only, I will list what are the topics I will assume. So, let us get started. So, the title of the course is Introduction to Algebraic Geometry. and commuter to algebra. Okay, so, what is the prerequisites? So, first of all, I will assume that all of you are familiar with groups, rings and fields. This means, you have a basic knowledge of what is a group and some basic observation rings and fields. Normally, this is taught in undergraduate courses which are usually called abstract algebra. And whenever more serious uh, things will be used from these concepts, I will state them possibly with sketches of proof or sometimes I will give a reference only. Okay. Now, another one which I will definitely assume is what is known as linear algebra. So, linear algebra is usually over a field. So, this is a study of vector spaces and linear maps. Vector spaces over arbitrary fields. And as you know that Nowadays, finite fields have many applications in engineering. So, I would also assume that you are familiar with vector spaces or finite fields or and not just not just see many people think linear algebra is just study of matrices, but that will not be usually enough to study more serious problems which arise even from matrices. So, these are the things I will assume and I will I will now start a course which will revolve about. So, I will first state what we are going to study and then uh, review the uh, examples. Uh, so, actually algebraic geometry is a very, very ancient course, very, very ancient mathematics and uh, it had many problems which did not even um, have solutions for many years. Even now, there are many problems which do not have, people do not know the solution. So, there are many open problems. Uh, for example, you can even also look at Fermat's last theorem as a part of algebraic geometry. Uh, and uh, when the final solution came, that was even much more complicated than what it was thought. Okay, so, what is algebraic geometry? So, first of all, I have a field 
k is the field and I am going to consider a polynomials in several variables in. So, I will write capital X 1 to X n these are variables or also they are called indeterminates in determinates over this field. So, this this precision will get clear when we go on in the course. So, so that those polynomials I will denote and of course, with coefficients in k. in k. Sometimes it is better to write in a notation than writing a text because even writing a text one has to understand. So, right from the beginning I will make it a habit to write in a notation and our notation should be very, very precise and also it should reveal what we are talking about it without much problem. So, I will denote so k x 1 to x n this here this set of set of all polynomials in x 1 to x n with coefficients in k. So, again we have not used full use of notation. So, now we will write like this. So, this is the set of f x 1 to x n and how do the polynomial in several variable looks? It is a summation, it is a finite summation, summation running over nu, nu is nu 1 to nu n, this is in n power n a nu x 1 nu 1 x n nu n with where a nu's are elements in the field k and this is a finite sum. Such an expression is called a polynomial in x 1 to x n and if these a nu's are elements in k then you call it a polynomial in x 1 to x n with coefficients in k or also one says over k. So, a little bit about the notation. Uh, first of all uh, throughout this lecture or any one of my lectures uh, n this denote the set of natural numbers and that is by definition 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. This is the set of natural numbers. I want you to note here that 0 is included in natural numbers. Many people or many books they do not include 0 as a natural number, but I do and many other many authors they do. So, this is the set of polynomials over k. And now, it is obvious that whenever you have studied polynomials first time, then you can add two polynomials, you can multiply two polynomials in a usual way which I will not recall because that is how you have been doing it. So, so there is a addition on this set, how to add, add the respective coefficients and then you get a new polynomial and multiply, multiply by this this key. So, if I have power of x, x, so if I have two monomials, so these x nu's are called monomials that is by definition I shortened it for x 1 nu 1, x n nu n. For any tuple nu, nu 1 to nu n, we this is called a monomial 
in x1 to xn. This is in n power n. So, you can add the coefficient for the corresponding monomials and that gives addition on this polynomial set of polynomials and with that addition this becomes an abelian group. And similarly you can multiply and how do you multiply? You multiply uh, by for example, if it was only one variable you just multiply by this rule x power r times x power s equal to x power r plus s and then expand it because then you need a distributivity over addition. So, with that multiplication this two binary operation will make this as commutative ring. As I said I assume that you know what is a commutative ring that is an abelian to recall orally it is an abelian group with respect to the addition operation and it is uh, there is a multiplication on that with respect to multiplication it may not be a group, but it is certainly a monoid. Monoid means there is a semi group and there is an identity element and the uh, the two binary operations are related by distributive laws. So, this is a general ring. So, R plus dot if you have a set and these two binary operations as I said R plus is an abelian group, R dot is a monoid, this is abelian group and distributive loss. Let me not repeat uh, more than this uh, because otherwise we will suffer our course. So, this is a commutative ring. So, therefore, when I say finitely many polynomials f 1 to f m in the polynomial ring that means f 1 to f m are polynomials in the variables x 1 to x n and these are finitely many polynomials and then what is our problem? The problem is the following. We are looking for the solutions. So, we are looking for this system f of x 1 to x n. So, they are finite x n this is f 1 this is 0 and so on f of f m x 1 to x n x n this is 0. This is a system of polynomial equations and we want to look for solutions. So, solution set now there are so many things that are ambiguous one by one we should make it clearer. So, first of all what does what should one mean by solution? and these polynomials are arbitrary polynomials they can be any degree and arbitrary number of variables will appear and so on. So, before I recall precisely I would like to remind you from linear algebra. Let us recall from linear algebra this whole subject centers around studying solutions of a linear equation system of linear equations. So, remember we were writing the notation like this. So, all these polynomials are li linear. So, that means a 1 1 x 1 a 1 2 x 2 plus 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 a 1 n x n equal to b 1. This is first equation think of this as f 1, but the only difference is writing this b 1 in this it is not written separately this b 1 in linear algebra we write it separately. Strictly speaking we should write that b 1 bring it to this side and write it minus b 1 and write it 0 that is equivalent and so on. 
So, F m A m 1 x 1 plus A m 2 x 2 plus 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 A m n x n minus B m equal to 0. And what 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 we what did we mean by solution of this system of linear equations? So, that means, we were looking for so solution set uh, solution set was by definition we were looking for the tuples a 1 2 not a 1 now I have already used. So, So, we were looking for a c or small x 1 to small x n, where was this? This was in k power n. That means, all the small x i are elements are in the field given field k. So, these polynomials were with the system was over k over a field k. So, that means, all these a i j s they are elements in k and then we were looking for the tuples x 1 to x n such that when I instead of capital X i I write small x i s then all these polynomials vanish simultaneously. For all j from 1 to m and then we were calling the system to be consistent when there is at least one solution and so on when system has rank and um, what is the nullity etcetera and then all our linear algebra played a very important role to study the system of linear equations. Now, even in case of linear equations we have seen that the system may not be consistent. System is not consistent means there is no solution, solution set is empty. So, now first of all the problem is much more complicated you will see because these degrees of these polynomials may not be they this these polynomials may not be linear and they may have higher degree and so this problem of deciding whether the system is consistent not also solutions where we are taking the solutions and so on. So, first I will show you by some examples the complications and then we will come and resolve one by one okay. and that will lead to study the study will lead to what is the there will be algebra involved and that algebra will precisely be called a commutative algebra and then in this course I will shunt between algebra and geometry. And, and so, uh, when I say algebra that means commutative algebra and when I say geometry means I can draw pictures and there is more geometric intuition what we get from usual geometry we had studied in earlier undergraduate courses or even in the school. Okay, so, so, let us see some examples. Just these examples are meant to oh, before I go into examples. I want to I want to um, introduce a notation. So, given f 1 to f m m polynomials in n variables with coefficients in the field k k field arbitrary field it could be finite field it could be. So, what are the possibilities for the field we will take? We will take finite field for example, z mod p or any finite field which is usually denoted by f p power n I will check we will check sometimes uh, any finite field has cardinality power of a prime number this we will check sometime. Uh, but probably you know these from some other courses. Uh, 
that is and then or you can take rational numbers this is field of rational numbers we got it from integers by adding all the fractions or real numbers or complex numbers these are the fields we will uh, deal with when we have more time then i would also go on to even bigger field than this namely field of rational functions this is called field of rational functions x is a variable or c and this is the field which you make from the polynomial ring in one variable or c make it a field this also i will digress when i have enough opportunity to deal with algebraic preliminaries okay so now uh, i denote vk of f1 to fm this is by definition this is the set of all small x x is a tuple this is i just copying it from the linear algebra setup x1 to xn these are elements in k so this tuple is in k power n such that all these polynomials vanish simultaneously at x is 0 for all j from 1 to n the 1 to m later on we may wonder why are we taking only finitely many polynomials so we might also consider a big set of polynomials which may be infinite also but just to get started and get uh, used to the subject i want to be a uh, uh, little bit slow in the beginning with all relevant notations and definitions so now with this notation also first of all it is clear that this is also same as intersection on j equal to 1 to m vk fj i if i only one polynomial and if i take a solution set of that that is this is solution set of the jth polynomial so these are all common solution therefore it is intersection so in principle it is enough to study one variable provided you understand the intersection well so that understanding intersection well is a very big phrase and we should come back to it when it is needed right now just look at it said theoretically so this is just i will use it for example so let us now see some examples so i will first take only one variable case so n equal to 1 and let us take now my field to be real numbers and let us take a polynomial f equal to x square plus 1 then what is vr of x square plus 1 that means we are looking at real solutions for this polynomial and as you know there is no real number small x there is no x in r with x square plus 1 is 0 there is no real number because all squares in real numbers are positive so that means this set of solutions or reals is an empty set so see this polynomial is a polynomial in one variable it's a degree 2 but there is no solution so when you go from algebra and try to do the picture geometric picture geometry this will become soon clear uh, by little bit more examples so what do i mean by algebra algebra i mean is to study the polynomial ring where there are two operations plus and multiplication and geometry i mean i should be able to draw some pictures with with some knowledge which will give us about algebraic knowledge from the geometric knowledge so 
and this I want to make it more and more clear and eventually our aim in this course is study this together and that is why it is called algebraic geometry. We just do not want one way traffic, but we want both ways. So, we should be able to derive some algebraic facts from geometry and we should be able to derive some geometric facts from algebra. For second example, I will remind you which you would have studied in, in uh, college days uh, what is called conic sections. Uh, but before that, I will also write little bit more. So, the same example, I want to change the field now. See, I want to show you how changing the field will matter. So, for example, you take now n equal to 1 still, but the field you take complex numbers and the same polynomial you take f equal to x square plus 1. And then what is the 0 set? V c x square plus 1. Now, it is not empty set, it has two solutions namely plus minus i. These are the two solutions where i is a imaginary complex number which means that i square equal to minus 1. This i is a complex number, it is usually called imaginary unit and this is i square equal to minus 1. So, now this has become better because we have we can uh, draw a picture. If I have to draw a picture, where do I draw a picture? I will draw a picture in C. Now, C is picture is C by definition complex number is a pair. This is all A plus I B, where A and B are two arbitrary numbers. This is the set C, right? C is a vector space over R with basis 1 comma i. That means, every element of C we can write in the linear combination with coefficients in real numbers a plus i b. So, if I have to draw the picture of C, I should draw a plane. This is a real plane. So, this is a real axis, this is a real axis. This is also, this is called an imaginary axis. So, that means, the number along this imaginary axis, you are writing it as i times b. So, if I have a b here, that means, you are representing it as i times b. So, if I have to write these points, so where are they? They are imaginary. So, this is i, this is 1 actually. So, this represents i and this is minus 1, this will represent minus i. So, these are the two solutions, these are the two solutions. Okay. So, as you notice when you go from real numbers to complex numbers, you get this non-empty set. If you go for rational numbers, then it is even worse than real numbers or if you go for finite field, sometimes it may be better, sometimes it may be worse. So, it is very important what field we are working with and we should keep track of that. Okay. After the break, I will give more examples so that we can start understanding the order of difficulty in the subject. Okay. After the break, we will continue our uh, lecture.